I think I'm blabbering too much. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Um, my name is Kaylee and I am a fitness professional here in Portland, Oregon. Um, I am very passionate about exercise and nutrition and so I decided that I would make these videos to help my clients and anyone who needed them. Um, so anyways, getting right into it, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, we're going to talk about the basics of nutrition label reading. Uh, I know that a lot of people have a hard time understanding how to read a nutrition label for their own health and um, so I wanted to go over that today. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about first is the basics of how to just read a nutrition label real fast and easy like if you're in the grocery shop or anything like that and then next I'm going to go into the things to think about um, everybody's gonna have their own opinions and some might say that's not healthy this is healthy I'm just going off of the basis of a standard healthy diet that a healthy adult would have if you have anything specifically unique to your own health um, I wouldn't necessarily take everything I say to heart uh, I would consult your doctor first um, whatever condition you have and so again all of these things are my opinions things that I've learned through my studies and uh, certifications and so yeah let's get into it okay so when you look at a nutrition label there's about five different things that you should really just look at um, and be able to glance at and digest what is in this package of food that you're buying. Uh, the first place you want to start is the serving size. Why that's so important is a lot of times things will jip you, kind of like, I'm not gonna name exactly the brand, but there's a protein cookie that like says all this crazy stuff, like 13 grams of protein and it's a big old cookie and it's awesome and they taste really good. But if you don't read the back, it's like 600 calories for that one cookie because you read and it says two servings, but most people don't see that. So anyways, basically you wanna be able to look at the serving size and know that you're probably gonna to have to double everything or triple whatever if you end up eating the whole package. Um, and also then you'll have to see too, like maybe I can only eat like half of this muffin and it's like a small little muffin or something like that. So serving size is really important to check before you decide to buy it, especially if you're buying like a lunch and you think you're buying a salad and some salads will say like half this salad and it's like really am I going to eat this small half of a salad that goes into that, like I was saying, calories, is that you want to look at the calories. Okay, so a standard active healthy adult eats around 2,000 calories a day to maintain a good amount of energy and function of their muscles and their system. Anyways, so Basically, all nutrition labels are based off of a 2,000 calorie diet. You'll usually kind of see that on the label. Um, I might show it up there. Um, a lot of people don't really know how many calories they should be eating for their body composition, their BMR, um, all these different things. If you don't really know how many calories you should be eating a day to maintain a healthy physique, you might be overeating, you might be under eating, could be anywhere. So. If you do need help with that, I can always help you. You can email me, I'll put my link down here. If you just wanna get an idea of how many calories you want, I'll totally do that for you. Um, Cause it's really smart to know where you're at, especially because a lot of people have no idea. After you've looked at your calories and you've looked at the serving size, next you're gonna look at your macronutrients. And those are usually bolded on nutrition labels. It's your proteins, carbs, and fats. They're the nutrients that your body needs in the largest amounts and they compose uh, they're the usual composition of most of the foods you eat. Since I'm keeping this video pretty basic for now, maybe I'll do another video going more in depth of the macronutrients. Um, I don't want to explain them too much because that's going to take the entire video. They've demonized fat, they've demonized carbs, uh, they're starting to try to demonize protein, but regardless, those are things that your body needs to perform functions and your me metabolism just can't operate without these macronutrients. So protein, is the building block of your muscle and muscle having a lot of lean muscle makes your body a lot more efficient it burns more calories your metabolism is fired you're stronger there's a lot of benefits to having muscle in your body so in order to maintain muscle and build muscle you need to have a certain amount of protein in your system so that you can replenish and build the muscle that you have and in turn it keeps your metabolism flowing um, optimally 
and so basically you don't want to be eating things well you shouldn't really have nutrition labels on all the food you're eating like it's ideal to be eating more produce and stuff but even at that there's some that will have nutrition labels you really want to have a good amount of protein in your diet so if you're picking packaged foods all day or like salads that have nutrition labels and that's part of your main meals of the day you want to make sure that you're getting a sufficient amount of protein um, at least like 15 to 25 grams um, per meal if you're based on a 2,000 calorie diet um, and like about four meals a day or so and that's usually a good place to start and you want to make sure that you eat it also because it helps keep you satiated um, aka full longer <laughs> and so it's really important for that the other one is fats and carbs which I already mentioned are demonized nowadays but Fats and carbs are both very necessary for your system to operate properly. Trans fats are things like partially hydrogenated soybean oil and junk like that. And that stuff just really doesn't break down in your system and it can clog arteries. It's just not good for you. So you always want to go for things that are zero trans fat as best as you can. Um, the tricky thing is like when you burn oil in a pan at home or things like that, essentially that's immediately making something a trans fat typically and so if you're cooking a lot of food at home you may be eating trans fats and not know it so you also want to make sure that what you do have control over um, by reading the label you don't want it to have trans fats on it um, saturated fats are not as bad as the world demonizes i know that they just recently came out with this big article about coconut oil and how it's awful for you because the saturated fat is a saturated fat yes to some extent so i will make a video about that another time but you probably could find other videos on youtube about that already and understand that essentially saturated fat is still a nest it's still a fat that can go into your diet and you not die <laughs> and it actually is beneficial to other functions in your system and you don't need to be as scared of saturated fat the other ones you want to look at that's under the fat labeling you're gonna look at sodium and cholesterol etc those ones as we all know they're they are better if especially in processed food to keep them on the lower side essentially guys the nutrition label is really based off of um, what the FDA puts forward on their food pyramid and all that stuff and so it's general it's very general stuff it's not necessarily for everyone so you always need to know your situation first anyways so back to it carbs carbs are essentially sugar um, it can also be fiber there's a lot of components that go into what they label as the carbs um, you may have heard net carbs before which is essentially taking the grams of carbs that are in a food product and subtracting the fiber and then your net carbs is essentially the carbs that you're gonna end up using as energy because fiber is an energy fiber is good for your digestive system and it's really good for you in general, but it's not energy. Um, think of carbs as energy. Well, almost all the food is energy, but you know. Anyways, so you want to make sure that if it's a whole package that you're planning to eat, that your carbs are not off the roof. Like if the percentage on the side of your daily value is over 20% or so, depending on your activity level, probably too much <laughs> so it's really smart to make sure that the ratio of carbs if it's just gonna be a snack or something that you make sure you work it into your meals for the day in a manner that makes sense like it's probably not great to eat a bag of potato chips before bed because you don't need that energy and especially because it's a simple carb and all that fat and salt ugh, just don't do it not smart again this is just the general basis of for the average person looking at a label. Maybe I'll do another one um, for like resistance trainers, um, weightlifters, because everything gets a lot different for us. <laughs> Anyways, one thing I learned in one of my nutrition courses was that there's this rule called the 520 rule. Um, if on the side, if you look at the percentage of your daily value, if it is 5% or less, it probably isn't a great source of whatever those macronutrients are and if they're bad um, or not bad but less ideal nutrients like trans fats or anything like that then that's good you want to be looking for something that 
those specific protein, carbs, or fats are 5% or less. It's a good source of those protein, carbs, or fats if it's 20% or more. Um, sometimes 15% is okay, things like that, but you really want to be having a pretty high percentage of um, the daily value if you're eating it for that intent. It's good to look at the footnotes. They usually have all the vitamins and minerals, things like that, that are inside the item. Some of the nice things about processed foods, well, there's not a lot of nice things about processed foods, but if there would be one, it's that there are um, vitamins and minerals that are incorporated into like cereals and things that a lot of people aren't getting in their dale, their dale, in their daily eating because they just don't eat enough fruits and vegetables, which is very common. And if you're not, it's good to get it in another source, even though it's not exactly as ideal. Okay guys, sorry I had to pause, put my hair back because I kept touching it, which I might still keep touching it. It's been forever my problem in my life. You really want to make sure that you're not thinking of the calories as being the measure of nutrition. It is the measure of energy that you need to burn, essentially. You want to make sure that the ingredient list isn't crazy long. That's a great way to know how processed something is and how you probably don't need majority of the stuff that's in something that has a long laundry list of ingredients. Essentially, uh, a lot of people say like it should be five ingredients less or something like that. That's ideal, but let's be realistic. A lot of people are going to eat processed foods that aren't more whole and natural. So how do you tell which one is better? I usually go for like the 10 ingredient or less if that's the case because mm, I mean maybe eight. Maybe eight is a good thing to think about but you just basically want to make sure that the first three ingredients or the first four ingredients isn't sugar or some partially hydrogenated something or uh, bleached flour I mean there's lots of different processed components to what make up these foods that shouldn't really be in the first four ingredients because the first four ingredients are basically what makes up the majority of the food so that's the best way to read the ingredient labels is just knowing that from the start is what makes up the majority of the food product and then from there down goes in order of how much it contributes to the final product um, that's something really important to know because a lot of times people will not know it but the third ingredient will be sugar and you're like yeah I'm eating a whole thing of sugar almost <laughs> that is very common. Sometimes the first ingredient sugar and like you're like what? It goes for when you're looking at the ingredients if it ends in os that's typically the signature of a sugar oh, almost 100% always a sugar so like glucose, fructose, galactose um, all those different things that's a sugar of some sort doesn't mean that they're horrible for you but it's just to know that there could be like brown sugar invert sugar and then glucose and then fructose all in the same ingredient label and those are all sugars they're all different kinds of sugars so that's also good and important to pay attention to as well all right guys to conclude this video the last thing i'm going to say is that you are never gonna get the vitamins and minerals your body needs from eating items that have nutrient labels, <laughs> aka processed foods. Um, if I were to give anybody the best advice they can about shrinking their waistline or anything like that, something we all know, you got to up your fruits and vegetables and your lean meats, your good fats, whole grains, all of those things contribute into a healthy functional body and functional system inside that body so you really got to make sure that you don't try to get all of your vitamins and minerals out of processed foods because you will not get them it is always way too low even if something says a good source of vitamin K like cereal says that a lot it's like not not really <laughs> all right so that concludes this little video. I hope it doesn't end up being really long. I'm gonna have to cut a lot of stuff out, but regardless, if you want to keep up with my videos um, or suggest ones, comment below, and I will also try to be posting a little more frequently. I had a lot of vacations and stuff like that recently, so I was enjoying myself and living life. Um, but anyways, stay tuned for more videos. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you want to. 
and I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys have a great week. Bye.